Would you believe if I tell you this, that the poor save money, but the rich save time? It's true. I mean, go ahead and check exactly the mentality of a poor person. Okay. When I say poor person, I mean somebody who is unfortunate as far as the finances are concerned. You find that they try the best that they can to save money. And then you find the poor, or rather the rich, this is the poor, they struggle as much as they can to save money. All right. And the rich, guess what they save? They don't save money. Guess what happens now? They save time. They save oil. In, in both cases, they are their aspect of savings but this one they save the money and this one they save the time now which one would you pick and which one is far much more important for savings is it time or is it money well i know there's an argument that time is equivalent to money so if i save money i've saved time and if i save time i've saved i mean well i understand but let me just draw a parallel line for me to explain exactly what does this mean See, me and you probably, or not probably, personally I was born up from a poor background, or should I say an unfortunate background. Well, um, because poor is, is a term that I don't know exactly what it means. But if you refer the finances, then I was born in a, well, what we call uh, the financial um, unfortunate background. So what happens that we agree with this mentality of, hey, guess what? You know what? Get, make sure that as much as you can, try to save us money, you know, try to manage your finances and what have you. But the point is this, we were never shared with the information about investing. We were told just to save. And that's why you find most of the people, they struggle a lot in life to save the money that they have. And it feels good when they see the money in a bank account. They are not investing. It is doing nothing. It is just in a bank account. They feel so happy. They are so good. Why? Because I have the money. Why? Because I'm saving. Why? Because I was told to save my money and make sure that I save God. And that's why you find the language of safe. To, not to save, but to save. The language of safe and assurity plays around with most of the people. That's why you find the insurance companies are able to convince you to subscribe to something called life insurance because they assure you just in case of anything your kids have been taken care of and blah, 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 and all those kind of things. You know, insure this, insure that, insure the other one, insure this because they sell the idea of, you know, and you know nothing, anything can happen, let's take care of yourself because of this. It's all about safety, it's all about savings and what have you. So the moment now you try to show up to that kind of individuals or that group of people who have been told to play safe in everything and every time and now you tell them guess what disturb that comfort make sure that you don't save your money invest your money you're disturbing that is what is offering them comfort and that's why most of the people who are in my fi this our uh, world of finances of investing and what have you we get to have uh, we the, the jobs throw to us are thrown to us you know because we disturb the comfort we disturb that thing the norm and what have you why because one thing that you're supposed to understand saving there is nothing wrong with saving but is that everything wrong with saving if you're just saving to save but if you're saving to invest, there is nothing wrong. Let's say, for example, you want to start a business or say you want to get yourself into an MMF. Say you want to get yourself into a bill, a bond or whatever the thing that you want to get yourself into. But you do not have that money as of now. But you're accumulating. You're storing that money. And I think that should be the best time to describe that money. You're storing that money. You're accumulating that money to reach a certain a certain number of it. So that at least a certain amount, rather, so that you can be able to get that money and invest somewhere where it will be giving you some returns. There is nothing wrong with it but now when you just save you get your money you save 20 percent throw it in a bank stays there throw it in a bank stays there or if you go a little bit better place you go ahead and throw that money in a fixed deposit and of course if you calculate that what the fixed deposit is giving you you run that against the inflation that we have in kenya as of now you realize you are getting close to nothing or you are literally even losing for example if you are, the inflation is at 6.7 percent Last year, that was 2023, we had an inflation of close to two-digit number. That is 9.6%. And the, 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 the fixed deposit is giving you 6%. That is pre-tax. Post-tax, it goes to 4%. 4% and the inflation is 9%. You're still losing 5% of your money. So you realize that you're not getting anything out of that investment that you're having. But at least you are actually understanding there is an existence of inflation. So when we say the poor save money, poor save the money because they want the money to save them in one particular time. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's something that is wrong with that money is that that money is not giving birth to any baby money. You know, I saw a certain comment somewhere. <clears throat> You know, we are, <clears throat> excuse me, we are watching uh, right now as you speak, I'm making this video at around August of 5th, 2024. We are watching, okay, I have, I, I never watched the Kenyan news, by the way, for your information, but I was just, as, as I was passes by, I came the part, uh, you know, these guys who have been fronted for the uh, cabinet secretaries, or in other words, ministers, you know. 
and uh, they were saying their net worth. And then there was one minister, I don't want to mention the name, said he has a wealth, I don't know, 380 million. Uh, that's like $3.8 million or something. And then he had a loan of 20, 20 million somewhere, 12 million somewhere. And then I saw somebody on the comment section saying, why would you borrow 20 million? Why would you borrow 12 million when you have 380 million? And I was like, oh my goodness, people don't understand how their finances work. <clears throat> You know, when you say you have um, 380 million, does not mean necessarily that money is in a bank. It's when you calculate all the assets and the liabilities, you, 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 you subtract, and then uh, whatever you get there. You see, people don't understand. You can have your money and still borrow yourself because you don't want to use your money, you want to use people's money. And this is the concept that I was trying to share sometimes back. I said you can have some money in a circle, say in a savings or a bank, and then you can borrow against yourself. <clears throat> You can go to a bank. You, you might even have a million shilling in a bank. You know, let's say that money is fixed. Or let's say that money is somewhere earning you something at the end of the year. It's earning you something. Maybe it's giving you like 12% or 13%. And instead of withdrawing that money, because once you withdraw that money, go do your business, you no longer have that interest that you're getting per month or per year or whichever the time that you're getting it but you can go borrow again is that money you have a million bob somewhere you can borrow like a half of that you can borrow five hundred thousand now you take the one that you've borrowed you go start the business with it you have that much just in case a bs happen that money will actually caution you for that and this is what you've borrowed you subject it to an investment or to a business you run your business and if you can manage to guess what happens now if you manage to pay this money fully from the investment or the business that you've started you pay it back guess what happens now you end up with the same money that you had in your bank account that's a million bob has not been touched and then you have your business and you've managed to pay back your money and your money is actually intact and guess what on top of that the money that you didn't touch is still giving you the interest or where you invested. People don't understand this simple concept of investments and the finances because it was never shared with us. Because people work with this poor mentality, lack of understandings when it comes to the investments. You have to understand this nitty gritties. You use people's money to make money and yours is the same. It's like the idea I was giving you about, hey, you have this five million, you want to build your home. Instead of committing that money to the ground and whatever, because this home is not an investment, it's, it's, it's somehow a liability because you need money to run it. How about you buy a bond for example, the one that we have as of now, you buy a bond that goes for 6.5 years at 17.9%, then you borrow against that bond, and then you build the money that you're getting from the bond that you invested. It's helping you to pay back the loan, all right? And of course, once the loan ends, guess what? You, you remain with your money and you still you have the home and you, you have a little bit of the interest on top of that. So you are actually double winning, you know? But people don't understand this simple concept. They say, why should I borrow if I have it? Yo, come on. That's what I'm talking about. Poor mentality when it comes to the investment. Use people's money, provided you have the good skills, a good touch of influence, a good touch of what you call the, you know, the correct knowledge when it comes to investments and what have you. So those are the nitty gritties that you're supposed to understand whenever you get yourself into the world of investment. Now, see, when we say the rich save time, if there is something that really, com you know, rich considers, you know, what we call essential and, 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 and vital is time. And that's why you find, you know, you know, rich tend to delegate the responsibilities. If, for example, I remember back when I was in the interior design, for those who have been with me for quite a long time, uh, they know I was in the interior design when I was doing the paintings and what have you. And, 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 and then I realized one thing. I could be invited by a, you know, wealthy individual to do some repairs for their single room or a simple place or maybe some, uh, I, I don't know, an outside place or what have you, or maybe like painting a gate. And then I asked myself, why would this guy pay me 3000 to do that job? And this guy is just on holiday or maybe the guy can just do it by themselves. And then I, I used to think they just have the money they want to relax. No, they don't want to relax. They're saving the time. Say, for example, that gate would cost, let's say, a whole day painting or preparing it and what have you. So the guy is like, hmm, I'll pay this guy this 3000 so that I can go do other things that will make me 6000 So... I've made double of what I could be used. Therefore, it means, how about I do this? I delegate this, all right? I delegate this responsibility. I go do other thing. I've set myself time. Therefore, I can be able to have to have two things being done at the same time. I have the gate being done, and I have me showing up to my job, and I've made my money. And also, the guy has made, the, my gate has been paid, in, and I still have. You, you get what I'm saying? So you can use money to, okay, there is this indirect way of saying you can actually buy time using the money. 
It's true. You can actually, I'm not saying that you add yourself like two hours on top of the 24, but you can maximize all the 24 hours that you have. You can have a lot of things being done at the same time. You know, you can have that being done, that being done, that being done by virtue of you using the money that you have. So what are you supposed to do again? Then how can you buy time when you have the money? See, I always tell you one thing, that money is a tool to make you more. And what you do is when you get the money, view it as an extra hand that you have. Let's say, for example, you're standing there, you have a half a million somewhere saved. That half a million is like an extra individual. It's like an extra hand. Can you imagine if you were to throw that money into an investment, it is bringing in some other cash. Let's say 6,000, 7,000 a month. It's like you have some, somewhere, somebody else who is working for you and bringing some other five or 6,000 extra in a month. So view that money as an extra tool. You throw it into an investment, it's bringing you some cash. That is an extra hand that you have, apart from the two that you have. Therefore, guess what happens now? Probably if you didn't invest that money, you could have done something for you to earn that 7,000. But now you've bought the time of earning that amount of money and you have not been involved. Let's say, for example, there is somebody in Kenya, there are people who get to earn 8,000 in a whole of 30 days in a one month. Now, this 500,000, you throw it somewhere, which can or which can bring you the similar amount of money. Guess what happens now? You've bought the time that you could have used as that individual used for a whole 30 days to earn that amount of money. Am I making any sense, by the way, guys? If I'm making any sense, just tell me on the comment section. Yes, Joseph, you're making sense. Are you seeing the way I'm seeing the things? Rather than just having that money, lying idle somewhere, it is neither making you something, it is just there, subjected to inflation, and nothing is going on. So it is good to view money from the perspective of I'm viewing it as an extra tool, an extra hand, an extra support, an extra system or a structure that is earning me an extra income on top of what I'm having as of now now that is what we call having to buy time so poor save money and the rich they save what they save time and when you okay i know i might even end this video and some of you have not gotten the point but anyway thank you for liking the video and also subscribing but now the point is this do not force things out do not use a lot of you know what do we call it? J just take your time, consume this information. Because even to me, when this, in kind, this kind of information was being shared, I never used to understand. I used to feel so bitter. It's like the real things were never shared to me. But when the thing came out, it's like the veil was actually removed from, you know, from in front of me. And, and I was like, wow. I never used to see things in this perspective. And always interact with people who are doing well financially. These are the guys who can actually help you. You can just check up. Even if you'll never get hold of any try to find out what exactly is going on with their life. Go check it out. Go do what they do. Talk the way they talk. Walk the way they walk. Behave the way they behave. Imitate them. And that way you can be able to grasp some of the two or three character that can help you in terms of the investments. That is exactly what we do when it comes to the money and that kind of a thing. So anyway, if maybe you got something out of this video, you can actually write a simplified comment on the comment section. Say, hey, this is what this guy meant. And also, if you didn't get anything on this video, well, I'm still going to be here by God's grace. And I'm going to share more of these insights so that at least you can be able to grasp as more information as you can but if you feel like you can't really wait you know you're so pressed you really need to get this information as early as you can my number is always on the description of this specific video once you grab that number shoot me a call we can have a discussion where i can be able to take you through step by step and for just a couple of his price for now it's a goodbye and see you in the next one